Okay, so, so good morning. Let's start in a comfortable seated position to arrive here Monday morning with some snow. If you haven't been outside, yes, it's snowing. And just letting the body sink, arrive, the mind calm down. So if your mind is very agitated this morning, I would suggest that you keep your eyes gently open and then focus on one point in front of you or on the floor and really bring your whole attention to that point. So the mind will need to focus onto that point. And then once the mind is focused onto that point, then you can close your eyes. This helps with calming the mind. If you close your eyes when your mind is crazy and it just gets crazier. Just taking a few breaths here, observing the breath without changing it for a moment. And then slowly connecting with the breath by maybe taking a longer inhale and a longer exhale. Slowly feeling the belly relaxing, the breath starting in the belly. If it doesn't, don't worry about it, don't get frustrated. But keep your mind with your breath now. It's easy to take off to other places with your mind. So again, if that happens, don't beat yourself up over it. Just acknowledge and come back to your breath. In the next couple of inhales, we're going to pay attention to the length of the spine. So as you inhale, find that space that the air in our body creates. And as you exhale, see if you can lengthen the spine from your tailbone to, till the crown of your head. So through relaxation of the exhale, we create a little bit more space. So inhaling, filling up. Exhaling, tailbone down, crown of the head up. So it's not a forcing, it's more an imagination of a lengthening of the spine as you exhale. Make sure your neck follows your spine. And then very slowly, without moving the shoulders, we're going to bring the right ear to the right shoulder and then coming back up. And the left ear to the left shoulder and coming back up. We're going to turn the head to the right and back to center and to the left. And back to center. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, bring the chin to the chest. So don't move your shoulders, don't move your back. Keep your chin towards your chest. Maybe feel an opening in the upper back, in the neck. And then gently start to roll your head towards your right shoulder. And then towards your left shoulder. So be gentle here. Lots of little muscles and nerves passing through the neck. Big weight of the head, so just releasing. If for you turning your head 360 is comfortable, you can do so, but be very gentle. And the last time in coming back to center 
and looking forward. So we're gonna open the eyes. Interlace your hands behind your head. So where the skull and <clears throat> the spine touch and then open your elbows. So you wanna feel that opening in the chest. Don't lift your shoulders up to your ears. So we really wanna roll the shoulders back, elbow, uh, shoulders back, shoulder blades down. Inhale, exhale. And then pull the skin of your skull up to the sky and same thing, the chin is gonna come towards the chest. The elbows are gonna come closer to each other. So bigger stretch, it's possible that the upper back is gently rounding, but don't force it. So explore your, your um, flexibility, your movement here, what feels good in this moment. Two more breaths here. The breath is a little bit constrained because the neck is closed up in the front, the throat. And then with your next inhale, coming back up very slowly. And this time, support your head into your hands. So your elbows are opening again and gently bring your head back. So not too far, just relaxing, not forcing, not stretching, just opening the throat gently. Bring your elbows as far back as you want to stretch your chest. And then coming back, align the spine and the neck. And then release. Bring your left hand on the floor. Inhale, reach up. Create space in your body and then exhale, move over. Inhale, lengthen the sides. Exhale, move over a little bit more. Inhale, opening the chest again, maybe turning the palm forward so that your armpit is more open. And then slowly coming back on an exhale. Lift the left arm up, reach up, right hand on the floor. Inhale, create that space and then exhale. So don't go to the maximum bend to start, but work with your breath as if you're dancing with your breath. The breath guiding your movement. And then at a certain moment, turn the palm forward so that your shoulder open up, your armpit is facing forward. And then inhale and coming back. So a couple more moments on in a seated pose. So bring your fingers in the back, come onto your fingertips. So you don't want to lean into the hands, roll the shoulders back, bring the shoulder blades together and then inhale, lift your chest. So it's a gentle back bend, especially in the top of your spine. You don't want to start to bend too much in your lower back. You can look forward or you can look to the sky, whatever is most comfortable, and see if you can take a deep breath in. Most probably your breath will be in the chest, so creating a little bit more space into your chest. One more. And then release. Bring the hands in the front this time placing the fingers flat on the floor, press into your hands and start to round your spine. So this time, shoulders are moving forward. Your whole spine is rounding. So from the tailbone all the way to where, to the crown of your head is one circular movement, pressing, Breathing, so breathing to the back of the body here. And then slowly coming back and coming back up. And last one, let's inhale, reach the arms up and really lengthen up. Maybe reach one hand, the other hand, and then reach both hands. And then exhale, turn to the right. So left hand on the right thigh, right hand in the back, open up. 
and then inhale up and then to the other side for two breaths and then let's inhale up and exhale we're going to take our bolster we're going to open the hips in the front a little bit so you're going to place your bolster and you will need to wall to put your feet against so maybe you need to turn your mat so that you can be there and then sit on your bolster stretch out your feet so the, your feet will have to be as flat as possible to the onto the um, wall so press your feet into the wall you can adjust the bolster a little bit later you don't want to bring the bolster under your lower back so you want to have the bolster under sacrum um, and even maybe a little bit lower press into your feet and come back so feel make sure that the bolster is not in your lower back otherwise so if your bum falls off the bolster then it's too far up so press into your feet lift it and then press your feet into the wall so press the heels press the toes press the the ball mount of the feet and then open your arms in a t roll the shoulders back gently and so depending on how high your bolster is this might give more or less sensation so just opening up let's rest here for a while you can do this with a block as well so putting the block there and then you can go a little bit higher um, i usually do this at the end of my practice with a block going a little bit higher and then really feel that banana shape opening my hips to the side so you can if you want you can place your hands onto your hip bones and give that direction so the hip bones are more separating here if you don't feel anything you might want to play a little bit with your bolster or come a little bit higher by putting a blanket underneath now start to press the feet a little bit more into the wall and activate the bum muscles roll the shoulders maybe a little bit more so activating lots of muscles the legs the core the chest is opening as we push our shoulders down and then release again so keep pressing with the left foot into the wall bring the right knee towards you and place your right hand on your right knee and start to make circles so we have a little bit more space or maybe a sensation of more space by having the hips lifted so just a few circles with your right hip here and then changing direction and then come back bring the hands behind the thigh and start to make circles with your ankle and press lengthen your right leg and again rest into your bolster and feel maybe a very gentle difference in sensation from one side to the other this time bring the left knee in left hand on to your left knee and start to make little circles so it's very gentle circles we don't want to go to the max we'll make bigger circles a little bit later and then changing direction and then coming back to center little circles with your ankle one side the other side and then lengthen again so press your feet into the wall if you want you can hold on to the bolster and release this time we're going to lift the right leg up 
So long leg here, make it as long as you can. And we're gonna make circles with our legs. So how far can you go? You can lift your right bum and we're gonna make big, big circles. For me, the effect of this movement is very similar than a treatment with the osteopath for releasing my lower back. So for me, this feels really good and then change direction. <clears throat> and then coming back to center. So press your right heel up. So if you need to be a little bit lower, that's fine. You can hold onto your bolster as well. Press it up, bring your toes towards your nose. And then very slowly bend your right knee, place your right hand onto your right knee and grab your right foot with your left hand. So we're gonna go into reverse pigeon. <clears throat> Gently play with your hip here. So we. We already lubricated in the hip joint. So see if you can maybe bring the knee a little bit more out, the foot a little bit closer. Oh, watch out that you don't roll from your bolster. So press that left foot into the wall. And then bring the right lower leg within your, towards your chest. Couple of breaths. And then release, press your foot back up, place your hands in the back, press your tie into your hands and your hands into your thighs, as if you wanted to create even more space into your hip joint. If this is too far from you, you can always take your strap and place it there. And then release your hands and release your legs. So adjust if you need to be able to push your right foot into the wall. So that's going to be your stability. Then lift your left leg up. So we're going to start to make those big circles. So arms to the side or holding on to the bolster. Press your right foot into the floor, into the wall, and then change direction. And then coming back to center, <clears throat> press your heel up and then start to bend your knee, grab your left knee with your left hand, your left foot with your right hand and play a little bit with your hip joint. So really discovering where, how your femur fits into your uh, hip joint. So you want to, and then once you say, okay, this gives me a little bit more mobility, then you can bring it closer. And then release, lift your leg back up, press your right foot into the wall, interlace your hands in the back, press your thigh into your hands, your hands into your thighs, strong leg, both legs. And then release your hands and bring your foot down. And again, sink into the bolster. Feel maybe different sensations into your hips. And now bend your knees. And we're just gonna flip. If you have a round bolster or a square, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna flip it on the side. <clears throat> And then from here, so just flip it on one side towards your feet and then bring the soles of the feet together and open your knees. So you have a support for your legs here. Just coming into butterfly. And release our sacrum is back onto the floor. And then bring the legs back together. And this time, move the bolster away. And we're gonna turn onto hands and knees. 
So you want to have a distance that you can press the foot into the wall, but that you can keep your spine neutral. So if your hands are a bit too close, then you might automatically round. So make sure you have space that you can feel length, that your hips can be parallel to the floor. So we're gonna start with a few C's. So look to the left, push your hips to the left as if you're making a C with your spine. And then do the reverse, look to the right, push your hips to the right. So it's mainly moving the lowest part of our spine and slightly in our neck, in our cervical spine. You know, always a challenge to move in the lumbar spine and then coming back to center. We're gonna inhale, lift the tailbone, drop the belly down. So don't go into full cat and cow. We're just gonna do that tilting in the hip and then press the tailbone down, lift the belly button up. So moving, between the pelvis, between the pubic bone and the tailbone. So do that a few times if you were standing, we would put on salsa music. This would be a really good move. So observe the sensations in your body without questioning if they're good without getting too attached to it. And then the next move, go into a full cat and cow. So exhale, tailbone down, round your spine, press into your hands as if you're vertebrae, we're like a wave rolling onto the beach. And the last part is a chin to the chest. And then inhaling, lifting the tailbone, belly button. Slowly curving the spine, one vertebrae at a time, and then looking forward. Three more times at your own pace, Follow your breath. And after your three times coming back into neutral spine. And then release. <clears throat> so we're gonna come <clears throat> We're going to stretch out our right leg and really press the right foot into the floor. So just have a look. You don't want to have your foot higher than your, your heel higher than your hips. You want to be able to really press, have the hips parallel with the floor. <clears throat> so you can always come onto your fist or if you're, if it's better for you to come onto your forearms, then you will be a little bit inclined, but that's okay. So press, press, press into the wall. This should activate quite a lot in your body. Make sure your heart reaches forward. So it's not about rounding the spine. It's about creating length everywhere into your body. And then from that stability, we're going to lift the opposite arm, palms on the inside. Your neck is part of your spine. So also observe what happens in your hips when we have the wall often and more easily we will drop that right hip. So the, the hip from, this, from the leg that's against the wall. So make sure you activate your core to create balance in your body. Three more breaths here. So it's much more active than if we go freestyle. At least that's what I'm observing. And then release and release. Take a breath. Maybe do a cat and cow, whatever your body needs now. If you need a child's pose. And then coming back. And this time, left leg presses into the wall. Normally without too much adjustment, but if you know that you have one leg longer than the other, you might need to adjust. <clears throat> so you really want to see do I have the same sensations, one side to the other? Maybe just because you didn't pay attention, you put your foot really high, maybe your arm position is different. So pressing also, press into your hands, 
reach your heart forward, press that back foot into the wall, activate your whole body, and then reach your right arm forward to the opposite arm, palm on the inside, pulling forward, pushing back, balancing the hips, simple, it looks very simple from the outside, but it's not. And then slowly release your hand, release your knee, and go into child's pose. And so you can do a wide-legged child's pose or the knees together. We're gonna reach our arms forward and find space in our spine. So inhale, deep, long breath, and then exhale. Again, that lengthening from the tailbone till the crown of the head. You can every time walk your hands a little bit more forward, push your hips a little bit more back. And we're gonna bring the left arm to the left, so at the height of the shoulder, keeping the hips where they are. Come on to your fingertips with the right hand and walk your right hand towards the left. So hips remain in place, opening on the right side. Maybe you feel very different sensation than when we were sitting. You can hold onto the floor, onto your mat onto your fingertips. So don't go flat-handed here. We want to work those muscles into our fingertips. As we get older, that's where the first signs of arthritis come into fingers and toes. And slowly coming back. This time the right arm goes out, so it's a, almost a T. And then come onto the fingertips of your left hand and walk towards the right. So creating space between the ribs. Two more breaths here. And then slowly coming back and walk your hands up. So we're gonna move a little bit closer to the wall. We're gonna tuck the toes. So your toe, the ball mount of your toes can be against the wall and your toes on the floor. And then challenge, sit onto your heels. So we need to stretch the toes a little bit. See if you can still breathe with this. Make sure the little, toes is, the little toe is moving forward because that one escapes all the time. <clears throat> Place your shoulder blades against the wall and then inhale, reach your arms up. So find length, but all the while we're pushing in, we're sitting onto our heels. So there is weight onto our toes. If this becomes unbearable, you come out of it. We'll stay here for three more breaths. So finding that length in the upper body and stretching our toes. And then release, walk a little bit forward and tap your toes. Okay, so I know we just stretched, but we're gonna continue here. So again, if that's okay for you, you can place the toes the same way or you come a little bit forward, away from the mat, so that when we come up, your heels are against the wall. So choose what's right for you. So we're gonna move into downward dog or dolphin pose. Spread out your fingers, press into the thumb and the index, roll the shoulders out. So the inside of the elbow comes forward. And then start to lift your hips. So keep your knees bent for now. Press your heels into the wall, whatever way your toes are. Press up, press up, press up. So maybe you need to walk your hands a little bit more forward, a little bit more back for space. We want to really find that length into the spine and a widening in the upper, upper back. Lift your hips up. And if it's accessible, you're going to stretch out your legs. So if you feel that your pubic bone is moving towards your belly, 
means your hamstrings are a little bit too tight. So then keep your knees bent. Otherwise, stay here, breathe, find space, lengthen the legs if accessible. And then release. Come back up, do what you told us what you want to do, what you need to do. Shake out your wrists. So we're going to go back into downward dog and we're going to lift one leg. So maybe you need a little bit more distance from the wall with your hands. It really depends on how much opening you can get into the leg. So walk your hands again to the front, come into your downward dog, bend your right knee, turn the top of your foot towards the wall and then glide your foot up. Once you're there, you can tuck your toes again, press into your hands and find that length. So it's almost a split or not. <laughs> See if you can lengthen both legs. We're still very long into our upper body. One more breath here. Press your toes into the floor. It should feel really, really, I find it a very, um, I love this pose. And then coming back. And then change side. So bend your left knee, turn the top of your foot towards the wall, glide it up, lengthen your right leg again, and then turn your toes so that you can press into your arms, into the toes, opening up. Come back when it's enough. And exhale, release. Bring the knees down. Come into your child's pose. Bring the arms back this time. Relax the shoulders. Bring the forehead onto something so that there's not too much bend into your neck. Take a few deep breaths into your back body. Exhaling, maybe chew them out. And then reaching the hands forward again, tucking your toes, this time downward facing dog without the wall. <clears throat> Walk your feet about a foot away from the wall this time. Your hands are towards the front. Your body is long. And then press your heel as much as possible towards the floor. Walking the hands back. Maybe you will need to bend your knees at a certain moment. So walking the hands back. And then you can rest your bum against the wall and come into a forward fold. So support it against the wall. Now for a moment, take your hands, place them on your bum and lift your bum up and then come against the wall. So we created a little bit more tilt with the tailbone going up. If that doesn't feel comfortable, get up off the wall and explore tailbone coming down. And then slowly bend your knees and start to come up. So see if you can straighten your spine as much as possible. We've been upside down quite a lot. So move slowly and just lean against the wall. So we are about a foot away from the wall. That's fine. Your bum and your shoulder blades are, or your shoulders are against the wall, your head as well. And then walk your foot just a little bit more to the front. This time the hips come up and just leaning into your head. Your arms are just hanging to the side. Our body is quite straight, so you're not pushing the bum back. And then bring the fingertips against the wall and press yourself up into mountain pose. So we're gonna walk a little step more forward. We're gonna do a hip opener and eventually a balance. 
<clears throat> so bring your fingertips against the wall, lean back, bring your bum against the wall, and then your shoulders. So this time our body is not straight. Separate your feet a bit wider than your hips and start to bend your knees. Now with your fingertips against the wall, we're gonna hold on so that we, we don't fall over. Lift the left foot and open the left knee and the left hip. So you might have to adjust a little bit here for distance away from the wall. So hold on, you can lean into the wall for now and then bend a little bit more. Your lifted leg, the foot is 90 degrees. So active core here. If your core is not active, you're just gonna fall through. So active core. So maybe you need to come a little bit closer to the wall, I do. And then come a little bit lower. And if you wanna move a little bit further, place your fingertips against the wall, push yourself off. And then maybe glide a little bit more down. So you can still have your fingertips against the wall. Lengthen your spine chest is open, and then from your hip crease, you start to move forward. So opening in the hips, the more your supporting leg is bent, the more you will feel that opening in the hips. Shoulders are back. Of course, if you wanna go into full balance, you can bring your hands in front of your heart, or even let your arms dangle down, maybe go all the way down to the floor with your hands. Wherever you are, that's where you are. And then to come out, fingertips against the wall, gently start to lift up your upper body, lengthen the supporting leg, and release the other leg. And stand here, Tadasana. You can close your eyes for a moment, just observing. And then we go into the second side. So fingertips against the wall, lean back. Probably the position of your legs is better now than when we started. So bending the knees. So this time bring the weight towards the other leg, the left leg for me, lift the right. Open up. So take the time to build your foundation. If the foundation is not strong, you're going to fall out or you're going to compensate with other muscles, which might be um, in a very asymmetric way. So it's not always a good solution, mostly in the long run. But And then, so your foot is flexed. Glide yourself down or push yourself off the wall with your fingers to Tips still on the wall. Make sure your shoulders are back, shoulder blades down. So it's as if your shoulder blades are nestling themselves in your back. Maybe go a little bit more down. And if you wanna feel a bit more, then move forward with a straight back from your hip crease. So you don't wanna round your spine. You wanna really keep the chest open, moving forward if you want to balance. Hands in front of your heart, or maybe going down, placing the fingertips down and then there to place the palms down. And then slowly hands back onto the wall, coming back up and release. And again, mountain pose. So I like to have my feet a little bit wider here in mountain pose to come back. So observe what feels good for you, what you need now. Two or three more breaths here. And then release. <clears throat> so we're going to continue using the wall just a little bit here. We're going to place our left foot, so the um, left side of our left foot against the wall. So lean against the wall. If this is not comfortable, maybe you want to put like a, 
uh, part of a blanket here. It's possible there's kind of little bones. And then start to open your legs. So separate your legs. And then turn your right foot towards the short side of the mat. So we're getting ready for a warrior two pose, but with the support of the wall. So really press the back foot into the wall, press the front foot down, build your foundation. <clears throat> Hips parallel with the side of the mat or as much as possible. Keeping the hips onto the wall, start to bend your front knees. You might have to adjust your front foot. Continue to press, use the wall. So what we're doing here is really using the wall as a support so that, yes, there is still anchor and strength in our back leg, but we mainly can explore going a little bit deeper with strength in this whole pose. So coming a little bit more down. And then reach out your arms. So if your left hand is touching the floor, make sure you don't push forward. Maybe you can bend your elbow, uh, touching the wall, sorry. Yeah. So depending on where, if you can, fingertips, and then reach forward. So again, push a little bit away from the wall, but not, uh, bend, not bring your upper body towards your right knee towards your bend knee. You want to create maybe a little bit more space, lots of work in the legs here. Roll the shoulders back, open the chest, turn the front palm, and then inhale, reach up. So you can lean into the wall here, opening up for warrior four, dancing warrior. One more breath. And then coming back, we're going to place the left hand onto our left hip bone. The right hand comes into the right hip crease. And then very slowly start to lengthen the front leg. So the right leg is going to lengthen. Press into your hip crease. So the right hip disappears, the left hip is moving up. So triangle legs. And then from here, rotate in the upper body. So we want to rotate, opening up to the side. So it's really your, your left belly is moving back. Your left chest is moving back. So that's the first movement. And then if you want to go further, you can keep your left hand into your left hip crease, in your right hand into your right hip crease, reach your left arm up. Create that length into your upper body, the opening. So you can almost clean back a little bit. And then if you want full triangle, reach your right arm down. So again, using the wall as a support here, but not to sink into our back leg. It's using that energy from the wall to be more stable. And inhale, reach up, bend your knee, bring the hands onto the hips, turn both feet parallel to each other, hands in the hip crease, and exhale, straight spine, moving forward. So going a little bit into the hamstrings, bring the elbows back, neck in line with the spine. If we exhale, maybe go a little bit deeper. And again, continue imagining that exhale that creates space from your tailbone till the crown of your head. And see what it does for you when you focus on that. And then bend your knees slightly, press into your feet and come all the way up. And then bring your legs together. So we got to turn to the other side. So I'll show you my back. So right foot comes against the wall. Walk your left foot out. <clears throat> Position your legs for warrior two, your hips parallel with the side of the mat. Keep your hands on your hips for now and start to bend your front knee. So if your front knee moves inward, grab your tie, roll it out. 
Exhale, go a little bit deeper. Continue to press the outside of the right foot into the wall. Really use that as a support. So maybe there's other muscles or some muscles working harder than usual. That's okay. And once you're comfortable in your legs, then reach your arms out. And again, do what you have to do with your arm that's maybe touching the wall. So use it to explore, not necessarily to go forward with your upper body, but to explore maybe a little bit more depth into your legs, into your hips. Keep the pelvic floor active here, reaching the left arm forward, and then turning the palm and inhale, lifting the left arm up for warrior four. So if your right hand is touching the floor, you can push to open a little bit more into the ribs here on the left side. And with your exhale, coming back into your warrior two, place your left hand into your left hip crease, your right hand onto your hip bone. Start to press into your left hip crease, lengthening the left leg. Continue to press the outside of your back foot into the wall. And then before we do anything with the arms, your, your right side of your belly is turning back. Your chest is turning back. And then maybe you can reach your right arm up and your left arm down. Make this a moving pose. So your breath every time is changing your pose. So nothing is static. And then very slowly coming back up, bending your front knee and bring both feet pointing forward and this time heel toe, your feet together. So bring the feet into Tadasana. Close your eyes for a moment, find your mountain pose. Feel the lengthening of the exhale in your spine. And inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, bring them down just to reconnect with our long breath. So do this two more times. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. And exhale, down. Separate your feet wider than your hips. Turn your toes out. Bring your hands onto your hips and gently start to bend your knees and come into a squat. So into our squat, we're gonna place the left hand close to the left toes. The left arm and the left leg are supporting each other. Lift your left heel and then start to rotate towards the right. So reaching your right arm up, opening your chest so you can really Open a little bit more than just bringing it to the side. Opening up. If you have fle flexible shoulders, watch out you don't throw your arm back. Inhale, exhale. And then coming back and changing sides. So right hand close to your right toes. Left heel comes down, right heel lifts up. Arm and leg are supporting. And then reach your left arm up. And then coming back to center. And if you want, you can play a little bit here, moving your bum from side to side by lifting one heel, then the other. And then coming back to center. <clears throat> Let's come and lay down on the floor. <clears throat> so I'm gonna leave you the option here 
to have your feet against the wall, or if you prefer not to have any sensations there, to have your feet a little bit off the wall. That's for after in our Shavasana. So very slowly come all the way down to the floor. <clears throat> Take a breath in and a breath out. Bend your knees. So bending the knees as wide as your hips. Bring the feet as close as you can to your bum. But as you do this very often, we're going to separate the feet. So you want to keep them in line with your hips. <clears throat> Lengthen your arms alongside your body. Maybe press into your head for a moment so that you can lift your shoulders and roll the shoulders under. So the shoulder blades can be pretty close to each other. And then press into your feet and start to lift your hips up. If you want to interlace your hands, go for it. If you want to lift even higher into the chest, roll the right under, roll the left under. So really opening the chest and the shoulders here. Make sure you're quite stable in the pose. And then from here, lift your hips up a little bit more and now press your knees forward. So consciously focusing on pressing the knees forward See if you can relax into the bones so that the work is really done with the muscles along the spine. Lifting every, a little bit higher every time. Two more breaths here. Pressing a little bit more into the feet. Work is getting a little bit more difficult. So opening those hips at the front again. And then release. Walk your feet a little bit more to the front and just come up for a moment. Place your hands a little bit behind um, your shoulders. Your fingers can point forward. So if you have some issues with your arms here, come onto your forearms. It's gonna be a little bit or very much more challenging, but so we wanna open the front of our shoulders as well. Fingers pointing forward, feet solidly planted, and then start to lift into reverse tabletop. <clears throat> Stretching the muscles into our arms, into the front of our shoulders, that whole connection which we tend to forget and then we are surprised. We have injuries to the shoulders. And then release. And come back down. So move slowly, come back down onto your back. <clears throat> Bring again your feet a little bit closer. We're gonna press into our feet, lift the hips just a little bit and move your hips over towards the right side of your mat. So you're a little bit in a banana. And then reach your right leg up and pass it over your left. So as if you were sitting in a chair. Open your arms in a T. So before we do anything, push your shoulders down. So maybe you need to roll them back a little bit. We wanna keep the shoulders onto the floor. And then very slowly start to move your legs towards the left. So the right leg is over the left, it's a weight. Push that right shoulder into the floor. You can look towards your right hand if you want to. This might feel different than a usual rotation, especially in the hips. So our hips are really stacked on top of each other here because we moved our hips to one side and then we had the space to roll them over. And then slowly coming back up. Undo your legs, press your feet into the floor, lift your hips and move them over to the left. Lift your left leg, bring it over the right, open your arms, press your shoulders. So focus is on the shoulders here. So if you want to do eagle, eagle legs here, you can too. Meaning wrapping your toes behind your calf muscle and then slowly start to move your 
legs towards the right. Opening the chest. Pressing the left shoulder down, you can look towards the left. Two more breaths here. And then with your next inhale, coming back up. And with your legs, press your feet into the floor. Align your hips with the rest of your body. And then bring the knees into the chest and do one move that you feel you need to do now. It can be just maybe moving with the hips, maybe a happy baby, maybe freestyle, whatever. Maybe it's already Shavasana, so whatever works for you. And then at your own pace, come into your Shavasana. So left foot to left corner, right foot to right corner. Shape maybe your legs, feel how the movement is loosening a little bit into the hips. And then bring your arms out, palms facing up. So if you're touching the floor here and that's too much sensation for a relaxation, then move back a little bit. If you want to explore, maybe you want to move closer to the wall and have your feet against the wall, so flat against the wall, still flopping out, but flat against the wall. So this gives a whole new sensation. Maybe this gives me much, but this gives me a sensation of grounding, of standing strong. Deep breath in, exhale through the mouth, let it go, let it go. All the parts of your body that touch the floor, trust that the, the floor will hold you. And the parts of the body that hold a lot for us, like the hips, the feet, the shoulders, the neck. See if with every exhale you can just let go. You can tell them it's okay, no need to do anything now. Release. Release the thighs, the belly, the chest, the arms. Release the forehead, the jaw. Skin of your face falls down, the ears relax, the throat. So if what you need now is to stay here, give yourself that gift. Whenever you want to come out first, reconnect with your breaths by first just observing, bring your attention to your breaths. Slowly start to lengthening the inhale and lengthening the exhale. And very gently moving the toes, the fingers, the nose, the ankles, the wrists, maybe opening and closing the hands. Gently rolling your head from side to side, if that's comfortable for you. 
Now, if you have your feet against the wall, as you inhale, reach your arms up and overhead and press your feet into the wall and find again a different stretch today. And then exhale, bring your knees into the chest. And at your own pace, roll over to the right side or the left side, whatever side is most comfortable for you. And then make your way into a comfortable seated position. Keeping the eyes closed. Connect with your heart. Joining the palms in front of your heart. Gently tuck your chin. May your thoughts be peaceful. Your words kind and respectful. And may your heart always be filled with love. Thank you for sharing your energy, your practice, I wish you a wonderful day. Namaste.